I'm Shobha Shelley, and I'm here with Dan Fogelman, the director of the new film, Danny Collins. Welcome to V96. It's nice to be at V96. Thank you. I love this movie. Thank you. This is a very, it's just a very charming movie. Yeah, is thank it? you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, that's kind of what I, how I describe it. I think it's like kind of, it's sweet and it's charming, and I think it's funny, and it'll, it'll actually make you maybe tear up in a good way. Um, it's a good kind of cry, I think, you get from the film. It did. At the end, well, I, I won't say too much, but yeah. yes, I definitely shed a tear or two. So, first of all, Dan, you've been a part of a lot of big movies that we know. I mean, what are some of the bigger ones? Uh, the, big, uh, the bigger ones, I've done uh, the films, uh, the live action films, Crazy Stupid Love mm -hmm. and Last Vegas recently. Um, I'd, done, I'd started doing a bunch of animated films, so I did... I wrote on the film Cars and Bolt and Tangled. So if you have kids, they've probably, you've watched them 800 billion times. But, I uh, don't, but I'm very familiar. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. And so, <laughs> and so this, though, is your first directorial movie, the first is. one you've directed. Yeah, it is, yeah. So tell me, is this scary? Was it scary? Well, it's Al Pacino, so you're right. kind of jumping into the deep end of yeah. the pond a little bit. But it's Al Pacino and Christopher Plummer and Annette Bening and... Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, you know, I've done a lot of movies in very short order, so I spent a lot of time on sets with some great directors, mm -hmm. and I kind of grew up at Pixar uh, learning how to make movies up there. So I felt ready for it, and I lucked out. The cast, Al, all, all these kind of legends, Al and Annette and Christopher Plummer, they happen to be also the nicest people in the world. And are so they? They are. I, like, you know, genuinely, sometimes you have to say it about celebrities and they're not i know because i'm like dan you can tell me if no. they're really like if al's yelling at you in between takes and stuff i mean he this does sometimes but but <laughs> but uh no i mean he really is the best and i mean i love him dear i, I want the movie to do well because i like him so much and so people are always like who are the nicest celebrities i'm like honestly it's all the people in this film uh what about jennifer garner she's yeah. the best yeah she's she the, seems nice she's the real deal like she's the kind of person like you think She's so nice, like Tom. The way that people describe Tom Hanks uh -huh. and Steve Carell, like, uh -huh. you're like, they can't really be that nice. She really is. She's that normal. She's normal, and she's a normal mom and an actor and wife and person. She's That's good person. to hear. Yeah. So this movie, you have Al Pacino, who is this? I guess what do you call him? Rock star. Or he used to be back in the '70s, and yeah. now he's kind of just living off the hits that he had back then. And I thought this was so fascinating. How you got the idea for this movie? Yeah, I was. I had just finished the film yeah. Crazy Stupid Love, and I was not. I was kind of stumped. I was just had writer's block. I couldn't figure out what to write next, and I was staring at the empty computer screen forever. Mm -hmm. And I was procrastinating on the internet with email, like you do. And I came across this story of musician receives a letter from John Lennon forty years too late, and it was the story of a real life guy who was a young musician coming up in the seventies. And did an interview early in his career where he said, I'm worried about becoming rich and famous and what that would do to my art. And John Lennon wrote him a letter, read the interview, wrote him a letter saying, don't worry about you control your art and you control your destiny. Stay true to your music and you'll be fine. Here's my home phone number. Call me. We can discuss it. And the man didn't get the letter for 40 years. It got oh, missent and misplaced. Yeah. yeah. What a life changing thing that could have been. Yeah. And so, yeah, totally. And so I came across the article and I couldn't get it out of my head. The what if. Yeah. And what if a guy had become everything he worried he would become and mm -hmm. then received the letter from his hero? Yeah. That could have changed everything. And that's sort of how the story then came about. Yeah. And so when you thought of this role and were writing it, did you know you wanted Al Pacino to play this guy? I did. I, I wrote it. When I write something, I kind of picture somebody in my head. And sometimes it's just like a buddy from high school or oh, my okay. mom. But in this case, I was picturing Al from Page. You never think you're going to get Al. But, yeah. But I was picturing him. And I just found the other day from six years ago, my, my now fiance, girlfriend at the time, uh, emailed me. She was like, you know, screw it, go for it. You got to go get Pacino. Right after, she was the first person I ever sent the script to. And and like, really, like, the second person was Al, basically. Wow. And so explain to me, so you have the script, you walk into Al Pacino. How does that conversation go? What was it like? Well, it goes through agents and, and okay. the process. And then you get the call one day, Al likes the script. Mm -hmm. He would like you to come to New York and talk to him. And so you fly to New York, and uh -huh. this was five years ago, uh -huh. and he was doing Merchant of Venice on Broadway. Uh -huh. And you watch him on stage, you go to the show, okay. and then you're kind of told afterwards, like, Mr. Pacino will see you downstairs <laughs> in his dressing room. And you're like, okay. You've got butterflies in your stomach. Uh -huh. And uh, I went down, and that was our first conversation. He could, he said, I could tell you wrote this for me. And I said, I did. And and it started with a kind of a year-long courtship as we figured each other's schedules out and each other out. And uh -huh. so we, we got to make it. And then the rest is history. The rest is history. And so you said sometimes he'd yell at you. Tell no, me some other behind didn't. the scenes. <laughs> uh, what are the other behind? He, yeah. really, he really, no, he never really yelled. He's the sweetest, gentlest guy. You spend a lot of time at Al's house, which oh. is like a big thing people wouldn't think. Is he? He's a theater actor. He's a stage actor. And he likes to read the script a lot. Uh -huh. That's why he's such a great actor. Uh -huh. 
And so on weekends during the shoot, I would be in Al Pacino's backyard with Annette Benning and Christopher Plummer and Bobby Cannavale and Jennifer Garner reading the script on the weekends at in Al's backyard. Um, every, Whoa. Almost every weekend. Yeah. And what are some things in his backyard that we might be surprised or just anything in his house? No, like warm? normal outdoor pool yeah. furniture. He's a really normal, like he's a very, Al's a very, uh, he's he's kind of like just a, like, I mean, he, lead, he leads a very extreme life. I mean, he's iconically famous, like maybe five people in the whole world. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, and he's incredibly talented, but at heart, he's just kind of wants to be a New York theater actor, I think, or w would have been very content being one, I think. And so in that way, he's kind of like an oddball in our weird Hollywood community that he's just does, kind of doesn't care. And he's very kind of low frills in that, in that way. And so you walk into his house, what's the first thing you see? Mm, his assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a dresser, a mirror, anything? No, he's got, I mean, it's kind of hidden. He's got a, he's got a <laughs> nice, he's got a nice spread out. I was fine. I was good. <laughs> okay, dad. All right. <laughs> well, how cool this movie, it's so well acted and it's such a cool story it's a really cool story and um like the ending i think is really probably one of my favorite parts yeah it's a, you, al told me it was one of the first times he ever cried if, if not the first time he ever got emotional at one of his own films it's really the end of the end of the film i'm very proud of and i, I think it's because the whole film is building to the final scene really in a lot of ways for mm -hmm. this character piece and this character journey and um al's just so beautiful and, and he's wonderful with bobby Cannavale, who People know from a million things, but he's about to just kind of blow up. Bobby's about to blow up in 18 different ways, even more right now. I loved him in this, too. Yeah, he's really he's great. great. He's just a dude. He's just like a You could tell. A, he's a guy. And he's uh -huh. and, uh, and so, yeah, I just like, I love the film. I, I think, you know, kind of it's it's become, it's become um, in a way, it's not cool to be heartfelt anymore. Uh -huh. or to, to kind of wear your heart on your sleeve a I, little bit. I but like heartfelt. So me, too. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> it's a kind of positive, funny, like, I think you walk out of the movie theater feeling you've had a nice, complete meal. Like, you're not yeah. over full, but you're, like, satisfied. You walk out, you go, it's the kind of movie, I think. Yeah. I mean, I where you walk out and you go, oh, that was a great movie. I liked that movie an awful lot. Yeah. Like it's that kind of feeling. Totally. And whose idea was it? Was it Al or was it part of the script to put on the fake tanner and the hair and everything? Was that just it something? It was part of the came... script, but I mean, yeah. Al, Al, has, Al was great with it. I mean, we shot that whole opening concert that you're talking mm -hmm. about where Al's preparing for his big anthemic concert mm -hmm. at the start of the film. We shot it at the Greek Theater it, during the intermission of a Chicago concert, the band Chicago. Get out of here. I, yeah, so because I didn't want to do any fake crowd or fake stage, so that's a real 10,000-person 10, crowd singing Al's song in the film. Which theater were you at? At the Greek. The Greek oh, the Greek. The in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so, so wow. So we, we had 10 minutes during intermission, and we yeah. put Al on stage, and we taught the crowd the song. Yeah. And uh, it was ama it was amazing, Al. Okay, was so it was during a Chicago concert, the group. For a second, I thought oh, you sorry, were meant you meant Chicago, Chicago, City. I was like, wait, <laughs> no, which one? I need okay. to clarify, Al. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Chicago, yeah. the group. Chicago, the band. Got yeah. it. Okay. How cool. I thought maybe you superimposed those people. No. So that was a real thing. That was all real. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Dan, it was so great to meet yeah, you, and well. I hope this movie just does really well. It comes out in theaters March 20th. Danny Collins, everyone, go check it out. Great film, Al Pacino, and a lot of huge stars, like you said, who are all very nice. All, all very, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so, if I ever come back, I'll tell you the one person who's not nice. <gasps> no, I'm just tell kidding. Me right I'm totally kidding. Gosh, you They're had all me. nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Danny. Good to right. see you. Nice to see you. <laughs>